hold up. Before you buy a book from a trending top 10 list and you check out of that eBay cart, make sure you watch this video. Hey, how's it going? I'm Mikey and uh, this is Comics by the Cover. If you are new to the channel, I first wanted to say thank you. I appreciate you being able to find me. If you are returning to the channel, thank you. You are super awesome. You're the best and I really appreciate you coming back. Uh, again, what this video is about for those people who are new is every Thursday, Key Collector puts out the trending 20 list to subscribers, of which I am a subscriber, and I suggest that you do too. Uh, if you like, I do have a uh, promo code in my description that you can plug in and get a week's trial free. If you are interested in other ways you can utilize the app outside of just looking at the trending list, you know, feel free to hit me a message. I'll be happy to kind of go over some of the things that I do. Or if you're interested in me uh, doing a video potentially of how I use Key Collector outside of the trending list, uh, I'll be happy to do that as well if uh, a few people comment and say, hey, yeah, I'm interested in that. So anyways, Key Collector puts out this list every week on Thursdays for subscribers so we get an early preview. I start to kind of look at the list, kind of formulate my ideas, thoughts, things I have about those lists. And then on a Friday, Friday, uh, when the list goes live to the, everybody else, I start to pull this list on my Instagram. I do pull all 20 books and ask people if these books are potentially something you want to buy and add to your collection, or if these books are that you are not interested in and you're looking to pass, or as I say, bye, say bye bye to these books, pass on these books. And uh, finally, what we do is we like to wait then for Comic Tom to put out his video uh, so we can see which books he suggested in his top 10 of those 20 of those 20 books the ones he most often uh, most likely liked then I review that list and I say okay well how do those books pulled and you know are these books that we should be interested in or are these books that we should be passing in again buy or pass is there any additional opportunities there you know is there an opportunity for a spec play based on some of these books because oftentimes with uh, some of these books that are trending they might be trending but other books are trending shortly behind them and there might be an opportunity to get in on a book on the low end because in my philosophy when it comes to speculation it's kind of like the the technology early adaption cycle so where in the beginning you have people who are early adopters and then it spikes to a trend and then it kind of levels off so you kind of want to be on this lower end of the speculation get books in when they're cheap because if you come in at the moment a book is trending odds are you've probably are already too late and it's kind of like you're uh, in that mass group of people that are seeking these books out and sure if you if you jump fast enough you might be able to get something uh, but by the time you take to turn it around it might be too late and you may uh, wind up taking a loss on that book when it when it dips back down in price because these books will trend up and again if you ever want to see these books on a six month rollout see how these books are doing can't recommend enough go check out jp's budget collecting i think he does a fantastic job so with that said we'll go ahead and get this list started again sorry if i'm a little stuttery i feel like i've <laughs> haven't done this in a while so like <laughs> kind of lost how to do this it's a skill right <laughs> anyway so starting off the list at number 10 we had was a uh, deadpool number six so deadpool number six as you can see it pulled as a uh, 30 percent people said that they are going to buy it while 70 percent of people said that they're passing uh, this book pulled because of uh eleanor uh, Presting or L, L, uh, L.A. Camucho, Camucho, I can't remember her name. Uh, so Deadpool's daughter, and then he winds up having two daughters, and in 2099, one takes one role, and I think uh, Ellie, uh, his daughter, his first daughter, becomes a, a character as well. And she's a mutant as well, if you're not familiar with her. But when she dies, uh, she just kind of comes back to life. Uh, but she she's a perpetual young adult teenager-ish i think it is so that's kind of why this book started trending and this was the first time i've heard her name for speculation for deadpool i saw this book but then also on the book on the list was uh, captain america number 307 which is the first appearance of madcap uh, which i am super behind i am a big fan of madcap making an appearance in a deadpool movie I think it would just be hilarious. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Madcap, Madcap it, it was also a character very similar to Deadpool who breaks the fourth wall uh, and has a lot of other uh, weird quirks about him, which I just really uh, find enjoyable. Uh, so also, when it comes to this, 
uh, book and other Deadpool speculation books. Some other books that had trended recently was, um, you know, the Wolverine number 88 trended. That was a, a Deadpool spec book, I guess you can say. That's where Wolverine and Deadpool first uh, battle. Then another spec book that trended was uh, Deadpool's uh, Circle Chase, which was his first series, uh, which was a book that trended about uh, in December. Uh, so you're starting to see these Deadpool books, specs, start to trend. And that's when I say, okay, well, what other books might be of interest? And two books that uh, that I would say are of interest, well, three books I guess you would say are of interest, is the first one will be, if you are wanting to go down this madcap route, you know, I'm, I'm always a fan of first cover appearances. You have Madcap first appearance on Captain America number 309. I'm also a huge fan of this possibility that, that Deadpool annihilating the Fox universe. And, you know, as a storyline spec, you may see a pop with uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. Uh, just as a, a short, I would not be long-term invested in this book. I think from a short-term perspective, it's a book that you may see a spike in sales. And if you can find it in your back bin for, you know, cover price or less or a dollar, you know, why not? And if you are looking to flip it, maybe you might flip it for, you know, five, ten dollars uh, should this book start to trend. The last book, which I think is a book that you, you should have high interest in, and I think is another character, uh, first appearance, who could be super viable for a Deadpool movie. And that would be uh, Deadpool number one. This is the first in the, his first ongoing series. So where Circle Chase was a limited series, this is the first ongoing series. And a character that made a first appearance in the year is T-Ray. Uh, and if you follow some of the Deadpool stuff, he's a character that is very closely tied to Deadpool. If I recall, he was the he, he originally was Wade Wilson, and Deadpool took the name from him, and uh, so they wind up being on the close sides. And he's a character that a lot of people are also speculating that may appear in the Deadpool three movie. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a pricier book. I think it usually ranges around fifty dollars. We'll put the cover price information right here for you again all, any pricing i source i like the sources and cover price i think they do a fantastic job of uh, coming up with average pricing uh, you can also see a lot of the the highest pricing so their pricing data is really really well laid out and i really enjoy using cover price for pricing data as well as looking for trends and pricing and so forth and again if you're interested in a code for that i'll have one of those in my description as well i, I do highly recommend that you set up with cover price as a a collector tool they are constantly updating and adding new features to the app or not to the app but to the website and you know it's only inevitable that hopefully someday they'll have it uh, converted to an app and we'll get to utilize that even more so coming in at number nine was astonishing tales number 25 this was the first appearance of deathlock uh, this book pulled 48.52 so that would make this a pass as well uh you know they mentioned in the video, comics, Thomas video, about this character uh, appearing before. And he did appear in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I agree, it wasn't a uh, grand appearance, if anything. But, you know, it is an appearance and, you know, some people, you know, are behind on this. I know they said the creator of, uh, one of the, the writers, creators, or someone involved in the Falcon Winter Soldier, that this is a character they are interested in, uh, wanted to come to the screen. And I could see it, I mean, but... I don't know if I'm fully behind it. The one thing I will say about this book is uh, the biggest takeaway is you're seeing a huge trend of people buying into a lot of these Bronze Age books. So I would definitely kind of go onto the Key Collector app, go into the Bronze uh, Key uh, category, and look for some books under there for some Bronze Opportunity Keys if you haven't already. Coming in at number eight was Invincible number one. This book pulled 63.37, so it is a buy. 63% is usually a pretty strong number when it comes down to these polls, I feel. And, uh, you know, I watched the series. I loved it. I thought it was a fantastic handful of episodes. I only got those three. But I, I, I and they, they, it's funny in the video, they mentioned about the Larry's version, uh, which I actually own that that version of the book. Obviously, I didn't, uh, I didn't buy Invincible number one because the price was a little bit high and I was fully invested into the character because I hadn't had an opportunity to read it yet. But I'll be honest, after watching those few episodes, I was like, man, I want to read this book. <laughs> and I was on I was on eBay looking for issue number one. Uh, so I would say if you, if you can find it for a great price, you know, definitely pick it up. I think it's going to have a good hype about it. I think the show, you know, it's definitely got some longevity. If I recall, uh, it had 149 issues or something around that, 150 issues maybe. 
And so it's going to have a potential for longevity on Amazon Prime if it is a successful show. Uh, the one thing I would also say about this is, again, they mentioned a lot of the different variants uh, that are available for you. But when I look at this book, some of the things that I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if Robert Kirkman is successful with this as well, might we get an earlier push for Oblivion Song, which we already know was in development. So that might be a book that we want to, you know, pitch to keep our eyes on if we haven't already. Uh, I think you can usually find this book on average around $10 according to the cover price uh, data that I pull. Uh, the other books that I would say is, you know, keep in mind for Firepower recently came out. Uh, I think this uh, this prelude book is where the, you may you want to go with it as well as the, uh, the free comic book day one as another option for you too if you are looking to buy into Firepower. Because that's I think that's a show that could really adapt well as an animation as well should, uh, should this come along. Now the one thing about that is it is a new series so there's not a lot to build off of yet. Uh, so it would be very, very, very early in the game on a book like that. But with Oblivion Song, we do know that it is coming to an end. So those 36 issues are, are about to complete out if they haven't already yet. I think it was like last month they said that they're going to be coming off, closing it out at issue 36. And I think that 32 right now. So, you know, with that, with that ending, you know, we might see that push for that development for that movie uh, coming sooner. And then if there's success, like I said, with this Amazon series, we might see, you know, a bigger push for that to be developed sooner. So coming in at number seven was Captain America number 312. Uh, as you can see, this book pulled uh, 6535. Uh, so that makes this book a buy uh, on this list. And this is the first appearance of Carl Morgenthau. So as you know, if you've been watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, for, first off, uh, spoiler, spoiler, right? Stop if you want, if you don't want to hear this, uh, or, or skip to the next one. Uh, but she, you know, Carly Carly Morgenthau is the character that's in Falcon Winter Soldier, and this is right now seeming like a just a gender swap of the character. It feels like there shouldn't be much room for this book to potentially grow, and I I do generally agree with that. Now the one thing I will say is uh, this book has. Uh, it kind of gained in popularity. I think when this book pulled back in February, it was a 3664, so more people were passing on it, and now more people are uh, sold into this uh, this book than previously. And I wouldn't be surprised if they explore the Carly Morgenthau character because she, I mean, I, she hasn't been in it much, obviously, but she's compelling. <laughs> Something about that actress is just is just compelling in my mind and i wouldn't be surprised if they explore the possibility that maybe uh you know her her father is actual carl morgenthau and that you know it was his death that inspired her to go into this organization with the flag smashers because in the comic books carl morgenthau uh, kind of became who he was because of his father's death. I wouldn't be surprised to see if, if they work that into her backstory because I, I can't I can't see them not using her as a character in some form. I, I do believe they also have speculation that she might be used for Ricky Barnes' character potentially. Uh, and I can see that as well. I can see the, the possibility that she is being like granddaughter or something like that, is being raised by this man who died and then she finds out that she has, has this person as her actual father so those are just my thoughts on that i think that's a you know it, you know it's a book i would say if, you, if i wouldn't go out and buy it on ebay it's a book that i would say if you find it in a back bin uh, for a reasonable price i wouldn't pay more than uh, ten dollars for this book personally uh, coming in at number six on the list we had harley quinn number one this book pulled 47 50, uh, sorry 41.59 so it is a pass uh, for a lot of people in this book but you know i'll be honest i love this cover i think this green is gorgeous I think uh, Yoshitaka Omano is one of my favorite artists. I'm you know, a huge fan of Final Fantasy, uh, so I, I do love his artwork. And I know he did do a Superman uh, book recently as well that came out in early March, uh, which I'll post right here for you. Uh, so if, you, if you're a fan of his art, that might be another book that you might want to grab. But outside of that, like I said, this is a, cause they, uh, pass for a lot of people, uh, which I'm surprised because, I, I, like I said, I think this, this is a gorgeous cover. Uh, coming in at number 
five was Daredevil number nine. But this is a repeat offender. There's a lot. Of, there were a lot of repeat offenders on this list actually. Uh, but this book kind of comes and goes from this training list. And this book currently pulled at a fifty-five forty-five as a buy. Now this book pulled previously. Uh, back in December, and it was a 75.25, which means it's kind of losing some popularity, which I'm surprised because I think the character is compelling. I, I think once we kind of find out a little bit more about her, then it might have uh, some more interest into this book. Uh, of course, they did mention Daredevil number 10 as another book that, that and is another book that pulled. And surprisingly, when Daredevil number 9 pulled back in December, Daredevil number 10 also pulled. So these books move. Uh, congruently or side by side with each other as one trend so does the other uh, the other thing i would recommend that the book that pulled last week uh, was a new avengers number 11 this was the first appearance of uh, maya lopez as ronin uh, and as you know maya lopez is echo so that's another book that you may want to keep an eye out and that's another book that's a repeat offender it constantly comes on and off of this list as well coming in at number four on the list was a uh, truth red white and blue uh, this book pulled as a uh, 6139 buy. So, I mean, I like this book. I, I mean, I recently bought this book about a couple months ago when this book pulled previously as well. This is another book that's been a repeat offender. This book has uh, come on and off of this list several times. Uh, it's this time we do have a confirmation of a character that does appear in the MCU. Comic Con mentioned that, you know, we might not see this character. And I do agree with that. I don't know if we're probably going to see this character in live action much. But I would not be surprised if Disney adapts this story in an animation format. So we know we're getting this what if animation. And I wouldn't be surprised if Disney explores this story just because of the story that it is telling. And I can see them doing this as a setup in animation. And then this could lead to... Um, to Eli Bradley becoming Patriot as part of the Young Avengers. I, I wouldn't completely knock this book off the list. I will say if you are interested in this book, a couple books that you may want to be in consideration as well. Uh, the first will be uh, Truth, Red, White, and Blue number four. This is when uh, as Isaiah takes on the Captain America title or role or puts on the costume rather. Uh, so that might be a book that you might be interested in as well. Oftentimes based on previous books, that's when uh, people... Uh, tend to identify as the most opportune point of the character. So, for example, like when you look at John Walker, yeah, John Walker's first appearance is great, uh, but it's uh, his first appearance as a U.S. agent that is the one that a lot of people often seek out as well. The other book I would point out that you may be interested in if you are wanting to follow this along with uh, Truth is uh, Crew number one. This is the first appearance of Josiah X. That is uh, Eli, I'm sorry, Isaiah Bradley's uh, son. And it is Eli Bradley's uncle, because you don't you don't ever see who the father is of Eli Bradley, if I recall. And of course, the most obvious book that you you should definitely be buying if you have not already would be Young Avengers number one. Of course, this is your first appearance of of uh, Eli Bradley, uh, but it's also your first appearance of several other characters, Kate Bishop. Uh, Hulkling, uh, Wiccan, and so forth. So if you haven't secured a copy of this, uh, I you know, highly recommend that you go out and try to find it. Uh, this is booked right now. I just bought it at my local comic shop for about $125. That now gives me three copies of it. So I have uh, one I bought, I guess, oh gosh, about a year, over a year ago. And then I found one actually in a back bin for like five bucks. You know, check those back bins. I can't stress enough. Check your back bins. Uh, and then I found this one at my shop uh, recently for one twenty-five, and I picked it up again. And it, it's it's probably about a nine to the one I bought, so nineteen nine four maybe. So if you haven't picked up Young Avengers, I do highly recommend that you do grab that book. Uh, coming in at number three was Machine Man uh, number seven. Hey, this book pulled at a forty fifty, so it is a pass for a lot of people. But yeah, they get a shout out from Comic Con. <laughs> That's kind of super awesome, right? Um, I think that's actually the second time uh, that one from him. Uh, the other thing about this book is this is the first appearance of the Power Broker. As he stated, for me, you know, a couple considerations that may be for this as well is that the Power Brokers could be as a corporation uh, as well as the new Power Broker <laughs> appeared in Avengers Initiative number Annual number one, uh, which is another book that I am a super big fan of. I think it, it could be the better bet when it comes to a Power Broker character. I think Curtis Jackson's Power Broker is dated and probably 
less likely. I think with the new power broker, at least he has ties to the Secret Invasion storyline, so he can be leveraged easier into the future of the MCU, in my opinion, if they decide to go that route as a power broker being a character. Uh, the other things I put down for this book were that um, if you are also looking at this, some of the things with the power brokers that I would take note to was um, we know we got U.S. Agent, we know we got Battlestar, and these characters were all part of the UCFW, um, which is a like a, a wrestling federation group that was in Marvel. And some notable people in that group were outside of, uh, outside of uh, Super Patriot or uh, U.S. Agent um, and Battlestar was uh and this is a book that i you know it could <laughs> i could see this character making a brief role in the mcu and that would be uh, uh dennis dumphy aka demolition man aka the d-man uh aka not wolverine aka not daredevil uh, <laughs> making an appearance in the series uh, especially with them doing this this bit where these are military characters instead of doing the wrestling federation and so i, I can definitely see this character just being pulled in briefly i want to go long-term investment with this character i would say if you can find this book in a back bin or you know under 10 bucks you know it's definitely a book that i would probably pick up uh the other thing uh you know he he well he made his first appearance of course like this so <laughs> messed that up he made his first appearance in thing number 28 as a as the dennis dumphy and then again his first appearance as the man and, or Demolition Man in uh, Captain America number 328. Uh, and you also get that, that gorgeous cover, cover appearance, which we all love. Uh, the other tie to this uh, Federation was uh, The Thing. So who knows, you know, they might work that in as a uh, as a, that tie somehow to The Thing to uh, a good way to introduce the Fantastic Four, which I doubt, but, you know, you never know. Coming in at number two was Tokyo Ghost. This book pulled 4052, so it's a uh, 4852, so it's a pass. But it's 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 just right on the edge there. Uh, I, I had no idea what this book was about. Uh, I just one of the things I really like about Comic Thomas. He kind of goes in depth with some of these books that you might know a little about, and uh, he dug deep into it. I, I think this seems like a really interesting story. So this would be something that I would potentially buy if uh, you're on the fence. Now I would again wait. Book books that kind of pull fifty fifty like this. You know you're usually better off waiting several months. Uh, and if you're not familiar, if you are on eBay and you do solely buy from eBay, you can put this into your search and i don't know if this works on the app but on the website if you go to the website put it in your search and remember there's that little heart feature which allows you to save that search and it'll email you when that book becomes available so as a book uh, gets posted then you can go online and look to see if it's uh, at a price that you would prefer to get it and that's another good way that i like to use uh, ebay personally and finally coming in number one was a berserker number one this book pulled as a 5743 so a buy uh you know John is hot. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like it, this book is a uh, is gained in popularity. It pulled previously. It was a 30, 3367 previously. Uh, as you can see, it's it's gained in popularity now. It's at a fifty seven forty three. The one thing I would say about this is, and Comic Tom talked about it, you know uh, briefly John Wick, but I would say you know if you haven't looked at or considered potentially buying John Wick number one, uh, I w I would do so. Uh, we do know we're getting another John Wick film. Uh, we also know that we are getting a uh, a, a spinoff of the hotel, uh, the Continental, uh, for John Wick. So John Wick could be a franchise that, that may be revitalized in the comic books. Uh, so you might want to potentially look at getting that. And with the talk of Berserker being a potential animated series, you know that's a great opportunity for us to see a younger version of John Wick as well. Uh, should that development come into play. So with that said, as always, that is the list. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, if you found some value from this video, you hit that like button. And otherwise, that would be a bye.